Today we are going to look at the uh, uh, further the session on our new web forms and how they uh, how you can build a workflow using those web forms and in this case particularly how we can integrate that with QGIS, Quantum GIS. There are a couple of different ways that, uh, that we can utilize the results of our web form workflows in QGIS and we'll look at those. So first just want to review again uh, what our web form workflows are. Uh, they are only available in GeoSync Go Plus. Uh, when you build the workflows, the forms, uh, they can only use it in Plus. You can't use it in GeoSync Go Desktop or GeoSync Go Mobile. This is actually an enhancement to our uh, work forms, the, the standard work forms that we have. It's a, a new, new interface with a lot of new uh, tools and uh, drop-down options and things in the uh, entry options for the, for the forms that that are, that are very nice. This will also improve uh, the map refresh performance uh, and updating the map. The web forms and uh, web form workflow can be completely managed from GeoSync Go Plus, either the uh, installed application or the browser application. And also wanted to review too the uh, setup. We're not, we won't go through setting up a workflow this time. There was a webinar two three weeks ago where we talked in depth about workflow or about web forms and how to how to build them. So just wanted to review the steps here. First off, you have to create a, and all this is done again from just Go Plus, from the app. The first thing you need to do is create a source, and basically this is a data source that when you create it, it's actually creating a data, a database for the form in your cloud account. So it's a cloud-based data source that you create. So you'll also want to make a layer for that source. You will then design your web form. And uh, I know here, just so everybody remembers, when you design the form, you're actually creating the fields in the data source. So you don't have to create your fields in the data source ahead of time. When you build the form, it actually does that for you. So once you have your form design, then you'll need want to create a project. Obviously, you want to have a map to display the the features that you that you collect or enter using the form. Once you have your your project in GLC Go Plus, you'll add your layer, so you've got a map, and then also your uh, you'll add your web form to that project. And any other layers or tile sets or anything that you would normally want to have in your project, you can go ahead and set those up. The uh, so once you have the, the form in place, uh, your project with the form and the layer there, you can begin to collect and edit and view features with GLC Go Plus, and those features as you collect them are in real time. You will see once you set up feature, you'll see it on the map. So once you have all of your, once you've finished adding data to your flow or in GLC Go Plus to your map, you'll probably want to export that data and use it in other, in other places. So because it, by now the only place you can see those features is in GLC Go Plus. You may want to export them to use them in other places. That's what we want to look at today. Or uh, one to also review the uh, the field collection method we mentioned setting features on your map using GLC Go Plus and these new workflows. It's the same as you would with any other with our with our standard workflow. Any feature the any features that you add normally it, 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 you do it the same way. So basically, you determine a feature location by clicking on the map, a location of the map manually, or using the internal GPS, or using your GNSS device if you have that attack. So once you have a once you've determined the feature location, the sign here on the left, this is what it looks like from if you're using GPS, you'll see your GPS location. If you set it manually by clicking on the map, you'll see the box with with the folder or the or the exclusive point. So either of these, you'll have, you'll have that available. So once that's there, you need to actually collect that feature by selecting new collection. Or if you're using GPS, you'll you'll, you'll click new collection. Um, if you're setting it manually, you can set a collect feature, or you can select the folder at, on, on the pop up. So once once you select that, the form will open, and in this case, it's the web form that we created. They look very similar to the standard forms with the exception of the additional options that we mentioned like you've got check boxes, regular buttons, a lot of new, uh, new features for your for entering the data. Um, once you fill the form out, click the save button or you, actually you can attach media ahead of time or before that. But once you fill your form and attach any media you want, click the save button and at that point it becomes a report. Your form is saved, completed form is saved, and it becomes a report, 
and a feature on the map. So now we want to look at uh, some of the ways that we can integrate uh, that the GLC Go plus web forms workflows can be integrated with QGIS. One way is to basically download the features to save them out and add them into QGIS. To do that, you go. You have to go to your account, and of course, you have to be logged in as an administrator to get to the account setting. But you go to account, and you'll see a new option there: snapshots. Basically, what we're doing is we're going to take a snapshot of the data associated with or displayed by that layer. Once you select snapshots, it'll bring you to a new menu. Uh, you'll see a list of any existing snapshots that you say. Uh, in this case, we have, have none yet. So I will select new. You select the new button for snapshots. It opens a dialog where you'll give it the name. You'll give a name for the snapshot. Um, in this case, I'm, I'm using my culverts layer, so I'm just calling it culverts. I can call it cohort culverts with today's date. I can give it any name I want. Then I select the type of snapshot that I want to, what I want to save, the file format I want to save in. You have three options. You have CSV, GeoJSON, and KML. So once I select the, the file type, then I select the layer that I want the snapshot created from. In this case, I've clicked the drop down and selected my culverts layer. So when I save that, it will actually create a culverts snapshot in format that I've selected. Um, it'll select a snapshot of the, of the layer by this name in that format. So you can see after I've saved, I go back to my list and I have a, a list of the snapshots that are available. We have, um, in this case, I've done culverts twice. I've saved, saved a snapshot of my culverts in a KML format and in GeoJSON. Both of these formats can be opened directly in QGIS. You select layers, uh, view them, you can, you can actually open them. Another option would be to maybe we want to export a shapefile. Uh, we will want a shapefile of our, of our features. So in that case, what we'll do, we'll utilize GeoSync Go AM Tools to, to export that. So you go to your data sources in AM Tools, select the Go Plus Snapshots, and you select the, the format of, first you would refresh, and it will show, give you a list of all the snapshots that you saved based on the file type that you pick here. Um, so I'll select the CSV. Here's my drainage culverts that we did previously. Would export that to shapefile. The shapefiles are stored when it's when they're created in your users folder, um, your GeoSync Go folder, export, Go Snap, Go Plus Snapshot. Um, so export shapefile. The shapefile will be in, in that folder, and you can add them to QGIS if you want, or ArcGIS, whatever program you're using. But in this case, we were talking about QGIS, so you can actually copy that to a different folder or just open it directly from there. Now another uh, another option would be to import the workflow data directly into QGIS, the QGIS layer. We do this through utilizing GeoSync Go AM tools and in uh, this case we're, we're actually our, our template uh, data, data, data type is SQLite and in, in QGIS actually supports SQLite. Uh, that's one of our, our preferred uh, data source for uh, for our workflows in QGIS. Uh, but before we can do this, well, there is some configuration that has to take place. We actually, like I said, we use this, do this in just go in tools. So you'll need to go in AM tools, go with SQL setup. And in this case, I'm not using a local SQL database, uh, SQL database, so I've turned that off. I don't, I don't see those, I don't have any anyway. At the bottom, you'll, towards the bottom, you'll see a SQLite layer folder. You want to browse to the folder on your local hard drive that contains the SQLite layers that we have open in QGIS. So we set that, make that setting. And you'll see why here, when we go into, then we go into QGIS, we have our SQLite uh, data source, our layer, it's already in QGIS, our QGIS project, it's there, it's existing. And it matches the workflow that we built, the, the web form. We built our web form to uh, to match up to that database. So what we can do, uh, if we go to data sources on GeoSync Go AM tools and select local database, I've selected my SQLite layers. So I can actually see in AM tools, I can see uh, the uh, SQLite layer that I have in QGIS, that I have open in QGIS or added to it. So there's my culverts, SQLite, data source for QGIS, that's my master data set. Now, we want to import the snapshots that we've done, or that we've, that we've, uh, that we've saved into that, that data set. So we go to our Go Plus snapshot, and we'll see, we've selected the, the, uh, the, the 
file type for the snapshot. In this case, it's GeoJSON. I will select that snapshot that I want to import. Um, first, I basically want to re refresh the list, so I, I can see I can see that that snapshot is here. It's listed. Um, you don't have to export or anything for this. So here we're basically just refreshing, making sure that our snapshot is there. This actually views the cloud-hosted data. This is our uh, this, is our, this is our cloud account. These are the snapshots that we've, we've saved out. They're actually still in the cloud. So the next thing we want to do is actually import our snapshot into our QGIS SQL uh, data source. To do that, we go to GIS tools and we'll utilize the XML tab under, under the G, GPS to GIS tab. We'll work with the, uh, the XML. We'll select our snapshot option. It's SS, and it'll actually browse to that folder uh, where we put the snapshots. Um, we'll actually select snapshot layer. Um, we're selecting our culvert snapshot, and then on the bottom down here, we're actually selecting that local database, the culvert SQLite database that's on our local machine that we have in Arc. So this is a snapshot that's in the cloud. This is the this is the uh, the, the SQLite database in QGIS. We actually connect. To those, and then we'll match the, the auto match. That'll match the fields up between. In this case, they matched up, so we don't we don't have to do anything special. You can go in and, and change that if they don't match exactly. You can actually say if we have if road name or RD name, we could drop drop down and pick RD name, but my match, so I'm in good shape. So I have my export file, snapshot file that was exported. My target, if you like database, I connect, match it up, and then hit run. At that point. Now all of my snapshot information, all my web form workflow data has been appended or added to my local SQL database that I'm viewing in or utilizing in, in uh, QGIS. So at that point, the data is there. We can view it in QGIS. Uh, we can edit it. We can work with it, whatever we need to do. Um, and at this point, if I want that information back out into GeoSync, my GeoSync Go Plus, I can update my GeoSync Go Plus mapping by using the, uh, just exporting the collection data. So from QGI, QGIS, we'll use the Export to GeoSync Go AM Tools tool, the green cog with the red arrow, we'll select that. We'll, we'll actually select the layers that we want to export. Those could be shape files, personal data database, SQLite database, of course, and, and actually any, any layers that we have there. So at that point, when we export them, they are actually exported to GeoSync Go AM Tools as a GeoSync Go Plus uh, formatted layer. So then we'll go to the uh, in Open GeoSync Go Plus AM Tools, and we'll go to the data sources, GIS XML export. You want to refresh, just make sure you've got the right one. So then pick the layers that you want to publish to the cloud. So when you export from QGIS, it stores it locally, that the chosen Go file. So then we go to chosen Go AM tools and publish those, export those to publish those to the publish those XMLs to the cloud so they can be viewed in chosen Go Plus. That's all I have for today. Thank you.